It's a new year, which means new tricks that will save you a lot of time in Premiere Pro. Every time that we open up a new Premiere Pro project, we have to start from scratch. Correction, we had to start from scratch. Here's a project that I've created in Premiere Pro. Now, as you can see, it is neatly organized. I have bins in bins to keep everything categorized and honestly, to not lose my mind when I cannot find an asset that I swore I have already imported. However, previously we would have to rebuild this every single time or you would save this project and then duplicate it and rename it every time that we start a new project. But now what we can do is we can go to the top menu, file and then click on save as template. Let's give our template a name, then let's create a new project. And then right here, as you can see, you can choose a template. Now this is the one that we just created. So let's select that one and then click on create. Now, as you can see, all of the pre-built folders with the assets are already available in the project bin, making it so much easier to start a new project. Now, if you wanna use this template, there will be a link in the description so you can download it. The next new trick is one that I'm really excited about because it is about audio fades. Yes, I know that sounds really boring, but I need you to stick with me, okay? Cause you're gonna love this too. Here we have two separate music tracks by Track Club that we want to fade. Now before we would have to create keyframes on this song by using the pen tool and then drag the line down in order to create this fade out. But now what we can do is we can create this little square and drag it in or out depending on how long we want this fade out to last. But that is not all because we can also drag that little square up or down and change the curve and therefore basically change the way how we want it to fade out. At the moment of the recording of this video, this feature is still in beta. You can download the beta if you want, but depending on when you're watching this video, it might already be in the public release. So I'll make sure that I'll give you an update in the pinned comment below. Now let's take a look at fading these two music tracks into each other. I don't know if that's the way to say it, but We'll just go with it. Now, as you can see, both of the tracks have a square. So if we drag one of those squares over to the next song, you can see that we've now already created our transition. And again, by dragging it up or down, you can change the curve or how you want to fade into the next song. And I'm gonna be honest, before we had these three default audio transitions, we had a constant gain, a constant power and an exponential fade. And a lot of people got really confused what all of this actually meant. And those days are now over because if we drag the constant gain to the cut, we can see that it is a straight line out and in and a constant power transition has a bit more of a curve and then this is what an exponential fade looks like. Now, honestly, I don't really think you need this anymore now with all of the controls that we have, but it is very nice to have a visual representation of what these transitions look like in case you do need one of them. I personally really like to give bonus tips. So here is a little bonus tip when it comes to audio transitions. Now, did you know that you can actually change the default duration of an audio transition? By default, this transition lasts about one second, but maybe you find yourself only needing it for a few frames every single time or maybe two seconds every time. And instead of having to drag it out or in and try to measure it to get it to that two seconds or those two frames specifically, you can change the default duration. And in order to do this, we're gonna go to Premiere Pro, Settings, Timeline, and then right here, you can change the default duration of an audio transition. And as you can see right here, you can also do this for a video transition. Another new trick in Premiere Pro is this little icon right here. Now, if we click on it, it will automatically open up the essential sound panel. And before we would have to go to window and then click on essential sound. And in this panel, we can assign tags or labels to different audio files that we have on our timeline. Now, these songs from Track Club that I have on the timeline have not been tagged yet. And we can now let Adobe do this automatically. So instead of having to select all of the music tracks separately and then all of the dialogue tracks and then all of the sound effect tracks and all of the ambience tracks and tag them, we can now select all of them together and it will automatically be tagged accordingly. And as we can see, the icon that we just clicked on now has changed to a music icon indicating that this is a music track. In the essential sound panel we have, and the name kind of says it already, the essentials to edit our audio. Every single group comes with different settings and different controls. So what we're looking at right now is the music controls. And we can set the loudness to the standard average loudness for music. We can use the remix tool to make our song longer or shorter to make it fit our video. And we can use the audio ducking tool to automatically lower the music when we're speaking and increase the music when we're not. Right next to the music icon on the track, there's also an effect icon. Right now, no effects have been applied 
which is why it looks grayed out. Now to add an effect, what we can do is we can right click on that button and then click on add effects. Automatically the effects tab is open up and we can start searching for an effect. Let's say that your song has vocals in it, which is something that I really, really do not recommend if you're editing a talking at video, which is basically a video like this. The audio ducking feature is not going to be ducking the vocals for you. So it is going to be really distracting. Now a little workaround, which isn't perfect, is by using the low pass effect. This will result in your song sounding a bit more mumbly and therefore the vocals are a little bit less distracting. Again, this will not be perfect, but sometimes you can get away with it. If you're editing talking at videos, I would personally really recommend you to use songs with only instrumentals and not vocals in it. But sometimes you do find that song in a music library where it has vocals, but it is, it's just that perfect vibe, right? Like you really want to use that song, but it has vocals. And that is exactly why I like to use Track Club. Track Club is a music library with tons of music that allows you to customize every single song to this stem, not the stem group, but the individual stem. There are some other music libraries that allow you to download the different stems, such as the vocal group and the drum group and the melody group. But what makes Track Club different is that you get every single stem within that group. So let's say, since we're talking about vocals, that you don't like the lead vocal because it's a bit too distracting, but you still like the oohs and ahs in there. Instead of having to mute the whole vocal group, so lead vocals, backing vocals, and the oohs and ahs, with Track Club, you can decide to only mute the lead vocals. One of my all-time favorite features in Premiere Pro is the Remix tool, and I already mentioned it briefly. It allows you to change the duration of a song, make it shorter or longer, but one thing that it doesn't allow you to do is change the BPM or the beats per minute of a song to make it fit the energy of your video better. It only allows you to change the duration. Now, if you use a library like Track Club, you cannot just customize the songs like every single individual stem, but you can also change the BPM. And then in Premiere Pro, just put it on the timeline and then use the remix tool to change the duration to make it longer or shorter. If you got curious about the magic called Track Club, there will be a special link in the description that gives you a free trial so you can go ahead and check it out. If we rewind a little bit, we just added the low pass effect to this song, right? Now, as you can see, the FX button has therefore become white, indicating that an effect has been added. In order to see this effect, Effect, you can just click on the button and it will automatically open up the effect controls panel. Again, this just makes it a lot easier to navigate in Premiere Pro. I gotta admit that those were a lot of new tricks that were all packaged into one big trick but we're not done yet. I am going to be really honest with you, there is one part in Premiere Pro that I just don't like the Essential Graphics Panel. Now the panel by itself is fine, but as soon as you're trying to find a Mogard, good luck. I have so many templates in my library and honestly, I couldn't even tell you what I have in my library. It's just one big mess with a lot of templates that I just don't even know how to find. And at the beginning of the video, we talked about staying organized, creating different bins, creating a project template to make things easier. And we can now do the same with Mogart. By the way, if I just lost you, cause I said Mogart and you have never heard of that word before, don't worry. Cause the first time someone said Mogart to me, I was like, what now? A Mogart is simply an abbreviation for motion graphic template, which in other words is just an animation. In the essential graphics panel, we can now click on the plus button to create a new folder. Now, if you're really organized, you might already have a lower third folder, for example, ready to go on your computer. And if not, you can just create a new folder on your computer, call it lower third, hit okay, and then start dragging all of your lower third animations to that folder. This might take a little bit of time, but now if you tick the box in front of lower third, you'll just see the lower thirds that you have added to that folder. Now you could do this with lower thirds, but maybe if you have different clients, you can create folders for all of the different clients. So you have all of the brand assets within one folder, super easy to find. You do not have to search and try to figure out what the name was of that motion graphic template. So easy. Thank you, Adobe. We cannot end this video without talking about one more new development or new trick in Premiere Pro that just makes life so much easier, and that is AI. Adobe has introduced a lot of AI power tools, such as the auto tag that we talked about earlier in this video. We can also, for example, automatically color correct all of the clips on our timeline by using the auto color feature, which we will discuss in this video right here. And of course, don't forget to check out Track Club in the description, there will be a free trial. And while you're down there, Go and hit subscribe if you like these videos.